Hi guys, I'm Aiden Payne reporting for Kids First, and today I have the honor of speaking with Sloan Morgan C. Sloan's credits include the CBS show, partners and guest spots on the Modern Family. So, as you know, Coral Wonder is a sci-fi film, but it still manages to stay family friendly. So are there any scenes where you felt like you had to tone it down so that way it wasn't too scary for younger viewers? Not really. I mean, I, I never really tone anything down. I'm kind of, I, I go all in all the time. So if the scene says it, I do it. And um, I, I guess it's more in the writing that it, it makes it family friendly. So I, I wasn't doing anything super scary. So, I, and it's a, it's a pretty fun, really cool film. Yeah, I understand. You just kind of just have to follow the rules. Yeah, yeah. I just follow the writing, you know, like whatever's on the page, that's what I'm doing. And otherwise, I'm, like, I don't, I don't throw in some extra really intense scene or something. And then they're like, whoa, wait, what is he doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I completely understand. So what do you like the most about sci-fi films? I love the worlds. I, I love world building. That's like my favorite thing. I mean, that, that's what I love like about Star Wars, right? Like, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the Star Wars films, but I'm a huge fan of the Star Wars extended universe because the world building is what's so fun about it. So the thing about sci-fi is like, you know, you have all these futuristic settings, all of these interesting gadgets and things and, and cool people. And like, I, I love sci-fi. I mean, I also love comic books. I mean, you can see right here, my huge comic book collection. Uh, it spans way larger than that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I love sci-fi. I love the world building. Honestly, I, I agree with everything you just said. And I'm not a huge Star Wars fan either. I watched yeah. the news. I mean, I'm a huge. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I just I don't. I'm not like the films aren't my favorite part of it. I love oh, the characters okay. and that, like the worlds and everything. You know. Oh yeah, I, I like I like the I I do like the movies, but I'm, that's not a huge part. Mm. So, does Porter Wonder include any attributes that you like about sci-fi movies? Of course, yeah. I mean, it has. Uh, a unique storyline with unique characters that are like, you know, you watch the film and you go, oh, okay, this, this is a really cool character. I want to learn about them. I want to know where they're from, who they are, what they stand for. Um, and, and I think that that's like, like I said, part of the world building, right, of sci-fi is you have to have something entirely unique to your story. Something that's, um, you know, signature enough that if you saw it, you go, oh, that's from Portal Runner, right? You know, something that people can dress up as or cosplay as at, at cons or events or something like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Like honestly, Portal Runner has like a whole bunch of stuff that I like about sci-fi movies. Oh, did you get you got did you get to see the film? Yeah, I saw it. Awesome. What'd I you think? Did you like it? It it was amazing. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. Everyone did a great job. Yeah, it was a it was a fun movie. So some actors they include aspects of their own personality into the character. So did you include any aspect of your personality into the character of Nolan? Probably. Um, I, I would say probably my drive. Like I, you know, when I, when I put my mind to something, I go for it. You know, like I don't think about anything else. I, I'm just like, okay, I have a goal. I'm going to complete it. And that's kind of Nolan's mindset throughout the entire film is that he's like, okay, my goal is to survive. It's to get away from this thing and, and to, to move on, to keep going. And, uh, and he sticks to that. You know, his drive is what has kept him alive this whole time. So he just keeps going. Yeah, I think that's really interesting how you actually have something in common with Nolan. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if I'm playing a character, I have to have something in common with them. Otherwise, I won't be able to play them, you know? I mean, I can't play Crypto the Super Dog because I'm not a dog, although, you know, someone could probably voice him. <laughs> yeah. So how does your relationship with your actual family help you connect with your on-screen family? Well, it, well, it's really about like, like with family, right? You, you have certain positions in your family, you have certain people that mean, a very, that have a very specific relationship with. I mean, I'm, 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 just, I'm over describing family, but, uh, but basically I just see them as my family. I, I react to my father in a scene the way I would react to my father. You know, I, I already have those ties and those connections and, and that love of family and for my family. And so all I have to do is really transpose the image of them in my mind with the person I'm talking to in the scene. So I just kind of treat them as if I would my own, you know, and that's where the relationship sort of comes forth. Oh, I see what you mean. So you basically just picture them as your own family members, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like going back into your memory and, you know, like rewriting every memory you have with like that person's face. 
or, or like just kind of seeing them as someone you're already related to. And that kind of, that creates like a, a natural bond in a way. If you just already see them as your family, then, you know, it, it, it's a lot more simple. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Mm. So if you could go anywhere, like if you could travel between time or dimensions, where would you go? I would go to the next dimension. I'd see what I'm missing out on. I'm, miss, I'm missing out on the fourth and fifth and sixth and all the other dimensions, man. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go see what I'm missing out on. To see if I can even comprehend it. It would be amazing. Well, yeah, I, I would do that same thing. Just go to the next dimension. Just see, to see what you're missing out on. I, yeah, I, yeah. See, see what like no other person would be able to see. You know, it's like that scene in Interstellar when. When Matthew McConaughey goes into the the black hole, <laughs> and he's like, "Whoa, I, I'm I'm here. No one else has done this." And I was watching that, and I was like, "That would be cool to go to boldly go where no man has gone before." You know, you know the brain. <laughs> yeah, that that would that would be extremely cool. Yeah, I'm an explorer. You know, just in everyday life, so it'd be cool to like explore like that. You know. So, as we all know, you've played some comedic roles in the past. So, how does the comedic timing that you've previously encountered help you create the role of no one? I don't know. You know, it's funny. I I did a few other roles recently where I wasn't necessarily uh, doing any jokes or anything funny. Uh, and I remember when the movie came out, people were texting me and calling me like, dude, you were so funny in this. And I was like, I don't remember being funny. And then, then I watched it and there's like certain things that just kind of come, come naturally. And, and they end up like landing as a joke when you didn't really expect it to. So I guess when I was doing the film, I didn't really perceive anything I was doing as comedy. Uh, but uh, if, if things came off as funny, I think that's just, that's just years of experience of, of trying to be funny happening without trying to be funny. <laughs> it's, just, it's just become like my normal cadence, you know? Yeah, I, I completely understand. Yeah, so I hope, I hope I can make people laugh. That would be nice. I like making people smile. Yeah, and I, I watch a whole bunch of com comedy films. Yeah, which is your favorite? That is a good question. I don't have like a favorite film, but it's like a show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's basically called The Suit Life of Zack and Cody. Oh yeah, I grew up watching that. Yeah, that, that show is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did love the comedy of that growing up. Yeah. So, we understand that this film releases around the holidays. So how do you think people would enjoy this as a holiday film? Well, I think the film at its heart is about family, right? Uh, cue Vin Diesel. But it, it, it's like, it, the, the, the film itself is about family. The entire cast is pretty much all family. I think the entire cast is family, except, uh, you know, save a few people. Um, so the holidays, Christmas and everything is about family and getting together and loving one another and being there for one another. and you know, spreading the holiday cheer and everything. And I think there's there's clear, uh, you know, parallels with that. And then also like, you know, if Gremlins can be a Christmas movie, then we absolutely could be. But it's set around Christmas time. And like I said, uh, since it ha it is so close to the idea of family, yeah, I, th I think that it, it matches really well with the holiday theme. Yeah, I agree because holidays is just all about connecting with family. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I said that so many times, but so did Vin Diesel in the entire Fast and Furious series. So I, I think I think I've, I undercut it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's weird is I'll, I'll watch like TikTok and I'll see like all these trends about uh, about like Vin Diesel saying family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and final question: What do you want people to take away from this film? Like, what's the message? I think just a great experience. Um, I, I think I want them to to enjoy it. I want them to be able to talk about it with their with their family. Um, I, I think it'd be really great for it to be like a favorite holiday film, you know, uh, like a, a, a holiday sci-fi film is such a cool idea, you know. I mean, you have so many different you know Christmas stories and things like that, but but something like this high concept, I think it's really fun. Uh, so I think the message, once again, is family is like you know protect the ones you love, love the ones you love. Be there for them, and um, yeah, I don't know. They just they just might surprise you. I mean, they always surprise you. Everybody surprises you every day. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I just hope people enjoy it, and I hope people enjoy it because of the family. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a great message. It being about family that that is an amazing message. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to thank Sloan Morgan Siegel for talking with me today. Oh, thank you for talking with me. 
Core One releases December 10th, 2021. I'm Aiden Payne, and make sure you subscribe to our channel so that way you can be informed about upcoming films. Thank you. Bye.